So good morning and welcome to our In Conversation With uh, series. This is where we shine the spotlight on entrepreneurs and different business owners, hear about their story, the story behind their business, what inspired them to start their business and what they've learned along the way. Now, my guest this morning is Sue Lewis. And uh, many of you will know Sue Lewis. I'm so looking forward to having her on this morning. Um, Sue is a specialist uh, physiotherapist. Sue helps people with um, antenatal help, postnatal help, and then through other stages in their life, and then perimenopause and menopause. Here she is. I was just stealing a little bit of your thunder trying to describe what you do, but I'm very pleased you've joined me because now you can do it for me. Um, I was just saying that um, I... I've been really looking forward to this for such a long time, Sue. So big welcome to you. Wave to, uh, we've got a few people on board already. Um, so please wave to them and just say hello. Morning. Hello. Lovely to see you, Sarah. Thank you for inviting me to join you this morning. Oh, uh, my pleasure. Well, it, it, what is interesting, I mean, I, Sue and I go back uh, one or two years. And uh, and I saw a, f a friend this week who um, she watches all of our In Conversation with us. As I think many people know now, we now share this on the IG channel afterwards, and then we put it on our Facebook page, and we put it on LinkedIn as well. So people are always coming up to me saying, oh, I saw you interviewing such and such. And, and a friend came up to me um, earlier on this week and, and said, oh, I saw you interviewing um, such and such last week. It was Georgie Crone last week, and, and she'd loved it. And, um, and then she said, who are you interviewing this week? And I said, well, I, I don't know if you know her, but I'm talking to Sue Lewis. To which she turned around and do you mean Sue Lewis, antenatal Sue Lewis? And this is a friend of mine who has teenagers. Um, so she probably first got to know you a little while ago. And I said, yes, do you, do you know her? And she went, of course I know Sue Lewis. Everybody knows Sue Lewis. She's a legend. She's amazing. She knows absolutely everything. And I don't need to introduce you, Sue, because that's who you are. And um, so I wanted to just start off by saying, you know, tell us about the Sue Lewis, but you know some of us feel we know and adore and have got to know during the uh, journey of our lives but but over to you the spotlight's on you to tell us about you Sue Lewis and where it all began well that's very sweet of you and I would never say I know everything there's so much more to learn and to be a legend in your own lifetime I think that's <laughs> rather than me but thank you that was very sweet well I started life as a respiratory and ITU physio at Middlesex mm -hmm. Hospital um, which I absolutely loved, and set up the first ITU physio courses, which are still running today. Sadly, the hospital is no longer there, but the courses still mm -hmm. run. Um, I loved it. But then when I had my first son, you couldn't do ITU part time. So I didn't want to do as, as a trained physio, ladies' necks and backs and knees necessarily. So I decided to do the Obsingaini course, which was an 18 month postgraduate course. Um, because my auntie, when I was having Ben, told me that having a baby was like pulling on a polar neck jumper. And she'd never had children. And I mean, I, I'm not saying you can't teach antenatal classes without having had children, but it's not quite the same as pulling on a polar neck jumper for most people, their first baby. <clears throat> so I did the antenatal and postnatal course at George's, which was very, mm. very useful because we were living in Wimbledon, George's in, in Tooting. And at the same time, I set up my own postnatal classes at home because I met a girl a girl who became a great friend still is actually in the off license when she was sort of seven <laughs> as one does um and um so she said why don't you do some postnatal classes for us because she lived in the same road and this girlfriend yes now is in America but her daughter Susie met a little boy six weeks old at these classes as their mummies became friends and they have now married and they're expecting their first baby together. So, you know, oh my goodness, speaks on my in my kitchen. Um, so that started really early with postnatal classes. <laughs> I had a student which was Bridge Over Troubled Waters, and I'm not sure about copyright laws, but um, <clears throat> and every time the ladies heard it, they had to tighten their pelvic floors wherever they had to be. And it's one of the most played tracks of music ever. And at my thought was that if they didn't tighten their pelvic floor they wouldn't have a bridge and then they'd have troubled waters and they'd be coming with incontinence later. <clears throat> so I was rather uh, alarmed when a local mum requested this at one of those fundraising dinners that we used to have <laughs> a long time ago. Can you remember those days? Um, 
and she requested this for Sue Lewis and all the ladies in the room. And they all had to put their hands up if they were tightening their. Pockets. Everyone cracked up laughing. <laughs> I was embarrassed, but in fact, it went down very well. So yeah, it started with Antina. It started with doing the course postnatal at home, and then as I had two more babies, um, my antenatal ladies, my postnatal ladies, were wanting to have some antenatal classes, and so that's when I started the antenatal. How oh, brilliant! Gosh, okay, how interesting. And you know, and it, 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 I love that story about the bridge over troubled waters because. I remember coming to your postnatal classes and every, I think every class would finish with Bridge Over Troubled Water. And so it's definitely a sort of um, a punctuation mark in, in my life. And those, those early days, I think when you have your first baby, especially, and you know, you're, you're you just know nothing and speaking for myself obviously and but you um just those little moments of humor those little moments of support i think are you know that they really carry you through and then you remember them i i think you know forever and you know as i said i i remember meeting you you know 17 years ago i was pregnant with my my first child my son george and um i think like a, a lot of first-time mums you know i had no idea what to expect um, had pretty much no idea how my life was going to change, you know, and, and still is. Um, I think I was, a, if I'm honest, I was a mix of excited a bit, um, nervous, yes, very much. And actually, if I'm really honest, utterly terrified. And, and I remember coming and sitting on your lovely squishy sofa and, uh, you know, must have been, I don't know, seven, eight months pregnant or something. And like the other mums, I, I think it was just, it was fascinating because you created this sense of calm. It was your knowledge, your expertise. And um, it, it, and I, you made me laugh when you talked about putting on a, a roll neck jumper. I mean, I, I remember exactly the question I asked you, and I'm not going to share it, but, but it showed my naivety about, you know, who's childbirth like? And, um, and it just shows that sort of, I suppose, blissful ignorance to a degree that especially when you're having your first baby that we all have. And so, um, so I guess, you know, tell us about how your services and how you help women and how, how that's evolved, as you say, from, you know, those postnatal classes to then the antenatal and, and then some of the other things that you, you do now to help women. Well, having run the antenatal and the postnatal, postnatal started getting busier and it got harder to fit people into the house and move furniture around. So we took the postnatal, yeah. I took the postnatal classes to St. Mary's Church Hall in Wimbledon. Yeah. And then, um, subsequently, or eventually, we went to the Scout Hut in SW20, which was, which was a lo lovely venue. Um, but... We expanded the classes and people wanted some more advanced classes. They liked having the childcare. I think that was part of it, having mm. trained nannies to look after their babies. And we didn't make any money, but uh, it, it was wonderful to have the, the nannies, to hand, the mummies could hand the babies over for an hour while they got on and did their exercises and had a, a chat. Um, so we did advanced postnatal classes and um, then we set up a pelvic core, pelvic core class, which was this sort of the pelvic, the Pilates for the pelvic floor. Um, so then that brought in some older ladies. Um, it was meant for ladies of all age, but it gave them abdominal core and pelvic floor training um, for whatever situation it was. And we added in some baby confidence classes and safe baby safety and baby massage. So we had a midwife, we had um, a health expert. So we, we had lots of other things. So the mums that had really sociable, friendly sessions, and they were informative, but they also you know, had a nice little group that they made great friends forever, really. And I, I remember those classes so well, and it, lots of things, like you're saying, that just that little bit of childcare, because again, being getting yourself out of a house is a, is a big deal, especially after that first baby. And then being able to go somewhere where you feel secure with your child, and you know, someone's gonna look after your, your baby, whilst you're then able to just, you know, have that really important, you know, bit, bit, bit of me time. And, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's just so important. And, um, but, but tell me, you know, are, are women today looking for the same things that, you know, say I was as a, as a new mum 17 years ago, you know, how, how, has, how has what people are looking for changed? And you know, what, what are the mums of today looking for? Well, in the early days, antenatal ladies, of course, stopped working when they're about 29 weeks pregnant. <clears throat> so they had time yes. to, to flop and 
and sort of reflect ready for their birth and they were happy to sit on my white squashy sofas as you <laughs> um i only had waters going once on those sofas which was <laughs> <laughs> and um they were sit on the sofas, learn how to relax and breathe and bulge their babies out and look about labour and, and postnatal care. Um, but now ladies, of course, are working much, much longer. I know the mm. lot has been different, but people are working much later so that they can have longer off on postnatal maternity care and, or leave. And so if they're working longer, they don't want to come or they haven't got the time to come during the day. So what they, they were wanting were evening classes with their other halves and Saturday courses. So um, the mm -hmm. antenatal classes dwindled and but the evening and um, Saturday courses were much more popular. So that was the antenatal. The postnatal, um, has, it's gone the other way really. I think people now are much more aware of their postnatal body. Um, before I think they just put up with, this is how I've had a baby, you know, this is what it's meant to be like. But now I think there's much more in the press and people want a postnatal check. They want to know um, what their pelvic floor is like and um, they can only they can only have that by having an internal examination. They want to know about their tummy muscles, which separate in pregnancy. Have they come back together again? There's a mm. lot of this diastasis recti of the abdominal muscles. They want to know what the gap is. And so they, they have um, a postnatal check. They also want to return to exercise and they want to know if it's safe to return to exercise. And in fact, a lot of people want to literally run or they can walk. And so sometimes not allowing people to go off running and jogging and you know, suggesting they do other things to build up their core before they actually do the impact of running. Um, they they can sometimes get a little bit upset if you say, I don't want you doing all those things or I suggest you don't. But um, literally want to have their bodies checked now which i think has changed in the last 20 odd years yeah and and really important to have someone like you you know that expert that you can turn to is exactly what you're saying you know on the one hand you're reading i, I must get back into shape i you know I, I, there's so much advice around nutrition and things like that as well but important to have someone like you to turn to that can give them as you say you know, not just the, the, the green light, but possibly the, you know, hold, hold on for a bit longer um, advice as well. And you do a, a, a mummy MOT, don't you? Yes, I do. Um, actually, as a mummy MOT pra practitioner, I see a lot of ladies wanting this check for their tummy muscles, their pelvic floor. Uh, they want e exercise advice. They want their cesarean scar checked. And a lot of, there's a lot of talk about scar tissue and soft mm. tissue, which with the, the fascia getting stuck. Um, they, they want some assessment, which is, well, we'll get on to Zoom, but I mean, that is actually, some of that's possible. I think quite like, you know, seeing people face to face. But yes, the Mummy MOT was set up by Maria Elliott, which is um, a, a very, very good organisation and um, certainly recommended for as many mums as possible, if not all, to have a six to eight week postnatal check by a qualified MOT specialist. Very good. Now, we've got a few people online. So if you've got any questions for Sue, please do pop them into the comments box. Or if you are one of those lucky people that's been to Sue for antenatal or postnatal, we're going to come on to talk about menopause in a sec. Um, or you've been for one of those mummy MOTs with Sue, then please do pop your comments and, and questions and, and chat into the box. It's so nice to hear other people's experiences. And um, I, I always get the feeling, Sue, for you, it's vocational, this. You know, every time, I don't think I've ever seen you without a great big, real smile on your face. And so, you know, it, you obviously love what you do. It, it's obvious you have a passion for it. And so maybe you could share with us, what are the rewarding sides to this? You know, why do you love it so much? Well, you're right. I do love it. And the women's health physio is a very, very specialised niche branch of physiotherapy. There aren't that many of them really qualified in well, in the uk but um no it, it is lovely often it's hard for people to pluck up the courage to say <laughs> that they need whether it's um it's usually personal issues you know, to actually admit thing to admit that you've got a prolapse that you're draggy down below to say that sex is painful um to be to have had a, a cesarean and emotionally feel you know, traumatized by it let alone forceps or other sorts of deliveries so it's a very special time that people seek help and i do feel that if i can help 
and just someone talking to you for an hour can make a difference I think even if I didn't touch them or look at them but I think there is now less taboo on discussing things like leaking and um sex but uh in the in the old days I think people found that really hard to get to grips with so I mm. really do enjoy I do I love seeing my ladies I'm so pleased I can now see people back face to face having had both vaccinations I feel very comfortable doing that and they feel comfortable too but um you know I, I really am passionate about what I do you're absolutely right I don't want to <laughs> well, want to and it's it is really interesting what you say that you know it's um it's not just for knowledge people are coming to you for it's that um it's that comfort it's 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 trust yeah and they feel able to share with you and i i I think that's a really, really important point. It's, it, you know, maybe you're relatable. I think it's that feeling of, um, you know, there's non-judgmental. You're just going to help them. You're going to help them through it. And that everything is probably solvable, I, I think, is, is really important. Um, so, look, we, we've obviously just gone through a really difficult year for everybody. You know, whether you are a, a new mum having to give birth in, you know, extraordinary circumstances or a, 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 you know, a new mum not necessarily being able to rely on her own mother because you can't see her, or you don't have that um, you know, that new mum group that you come across that instantly you know, that you meet through antenatal classes and you bond with other new mothers just you know so easily because it's a real shared experience. Um, tell us about how you've had to adapt during the pandemic, and and also you know how a how you've helped your had adapted your business but also how you've been able to help your clients through what will have been a, you know, really challenging time for, for them as well as for you. Well, you're right. The pandemic has changed everything for everyone, I'm sure. Um, mm. yeah, metal classes, no more squashy sofas. Um, yes. <laughs> but I can do it by Zoom. And in fact, I've been doing quite a lot of antenatal, but one-to-one -one or me with, a couple so that the antenatal course is completely tailor-made for them over a six week period sometimes they want it over a morning um so it fits in with when they want to do it and so i can give lots of support and because it's completely tailor-made people do have worries that they don't always admit in a group situation you know they're scared yeah. about something and it's really important to find out about that so in a way that's easier over zoom because they can really talk about that what they want to know so i can really identify with them and I can tailor make the antenatal course for them um, and it's actually rather nice I've got three mummies to be at the moment and they all three are coming to me on zoom actually because they they don't yeah, but I'm either in Wimbledon or West Sussex so then they're, they're not near either of my venues um, but by zoom they can come easily and um, but all three of them their mummies came to me when they were pregnant so it makes me no. feel a little but um, it's rather nice to have these three girls who are are all coming because their mothers have recommended it but uh, so that that's quite fun um and i mean in the old days though the, the antenatal classes that's where mums made their real friendships didn't they mm. they had a group of mums that they met and they would have coffee they would go on holiday they'd become good parents the next year next children etc um that is lost if you're doing one-to-ones uh, yeah. but in postnatal classes um again uh, we couldn't carry those on because of social distancing with our nannies and the, the hall shut etc so we had to stop in March and we don't actually quite know when we can go back because of the social distancing still with the mums and the babies and the nannies um yeah. they only have four mums in a room it, it, it's difficult but um I've been doing postnatal classes for a while now with, with a lovely girl called Jill Martin who I think you know as well yes and yeah. was, was the ex-manager of H, the gym in Wimbledon but she also is anti and postnatally trained she's a personal trainer she does massage she's wonderful and we've been we've been doing our class the classes together for a while and so we came up with a six-week postnatal plan for our postnatal mums and we sent them out weekly videos of safe postnatal progressive exercises and they can do these anytime anywhere as often as they want. So although they're not coming to a class once a week to meet with other mums and have that one hour childcare, for some people, it works quite well to do, they could do it three times a week or they could do it every day if they wanted to at a time that suits them. They haven't got to worry about childcare. And I've got two mums at the moment in France. Now they wouldn't be coming to my normal 
course, if, if, you know, if I was in Wimbledon or Sussex. So um, for them to be able to do it on Zoom is fine. And hopefully the postnatal courses have given some sort of support. Jill and I have been available for <coughs> advice that anyone wants. And also we, we have links with a breastfeeding counsellor, with midwife, with cranial osteopaths, with any of the newborn problems. But having said that, um, one of the things that it sticks out is the postnatal mums not having the support with their other mums. I had one really sad story of a girl whose babe actually had 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 brain surgery. She hadn't realised that he wasn't sitting up. He wasn't doing what other babies that age should be doing because she didn't see any other mothers in the lockdown. The health visitor didn't come. She didn't realise that she had a problem with the child for a long, long time, which I think if she'd been being able to socialise with other mums, that would have been mm. pitiful. So I think there's a huge disadvantage for people not being able to be socialised together. But we've tried to make the best of it. We've tried to support them as, as well as we can. Um, and it'd be nice when we can get back to doing classes. But I do, mm. I do think that there will be a role for Zoom because I do think you know, it's, it's further reaching. You know, antenatal ladies can come from wherever and my postnatal. So I think there is a, will be a role for both in the future. I completely agree. And, you know, and it's not just in one's health and wellness and, and the area that you specialise in. It's in every aspect of our lives that we will, I think, settle on a hybrid model. There's been a complete, you know, complete acceptance of Zoom and, you know, like we're doing now. You know, in the good old days, we probably would have gone and had a chat over a cup of coffee and we would we have thought to film it? Would we share it in this way? And so I think there's, there's lots of benefits. But as you say, the, the missed socialisation, the missed signals... And I think especially for, you know, for new mums who are, I, I think there's so many things that we, we worry about and a lot of the time unnecessarily, but as you rightly point out, you know, occasionally these are signals that really need to be picked up on and, and picked up on as quickly as possible. And so, um, so I can see why absolutely, you know, you want to get back to that. And, but as you say, being able to reach people you know, from West Sussex and from Wimbledon and from London, you know, but, but um, you know, and also abroad as well. So, um, there, there are benefits too. Now, we've obviously spent a lot of time on antenatal and postnatal. Um, I, um, I've been a, a fan of yours, a client of yours for, you know, throughout my, um, my adult life and been to you for various different things. So let's, let's talk about menopause. And, you know, hallelujah, we're finally breaking the taboo. We're finally, you know, shining the spotlight on it. You know, celebs are picking up on it. So, you know, it's good news. It's getting talked about. And we know that Davina McCall is um, fronting a programme on Channel 4 tonight, um, which again, it's, you know, it's good news. It brings it up, it brings it to the fore, and it's okay to talk about it, just like you were talking about, you know, other, other um, things that in the past we've been so, sort of felt it so difficult. It's such a social stigma to talk about. So, so tell us about how you help women go through not just menopause, but that perimenopausal stage, which I think there's just still it's still skirted around people just don't know enough about it well luckily much more is being talked about it which is really good um but i think some people don't realize that i mean estrogen actually drives absolutely everything and there are estrogen yeah. receptors everywhere in your body so from a physio point of view things like bones and muscles and ligaments connective tissue cartilage everything um but i think the menopause comes at average age 51 but perimenopause some time before um, it's the wrong time of life for women to go through this. Yes. It's the sandwich. They're sandwiched between working, probably, um, teenage hormonal children, maybe caring for elderly parents. So they're sort of sandwiched in the middle. So the women don't have time to look after themselves. But of course, they do need to be able to look after themselves. I mean, it's well known that they talk about the seven dwarfs of menopause. They talk about itchy but bitchy, sweaty, bloaty, forgetful, sleepy, and psycho. But <laughs> and the ones that I'd like to emphasize more is achy, because a lot yes. of people have joint pain in menopause, and they don't realize it's because of the lack of estrogen. So they need exercise advice. They need weight-bearing exercise so that they to prevent osteoporosis. They need to be able to do balance and core exercises so that they've got a strong core so they don't fall later on. So achy needs to be one of our dwarfs. We also need to have leaky and drippy joining in. Yes. <laughs> 
have pelvic floor problems. They have stressed urinary incontinence or they just can't get to the loo in time and they need advice. So they need advice, not just to tighten their pelvic floor. Sometimes pelvic floor is actually too tight, so they've been doing the wrong exercises, but they need advice on what to drink, how to empty their bladder, to rock backwards and forwards on the loo. They need the correct information. Then we need a we need to talk about Bulgy because he's joined our little dwarf crew. And this is people with prolapse. So pelvic organ prolapse, which is can happen postnatally, again, estrogen dependent, but a lot of grandparents are lifting heavy grandchildren now. And yes. the prolapses can happen, whether it's bladder, uterus, bowel. So information on that. And again, the correct way of emptying perhaps the bowel this time. So make sure that you have your knees higher than your hips. So a squatty potty or feet on a stool or something and leaning forwards and relaxing so that you don't, you don't strain and you either shh or the poo out. So just giving people the right information on how to empty their bladder and bowel, what you think would, would be known, but it's not always. So mm. bubble needs to come with us in our little dwarf trip. And then fatty because people get <laughs> stage spread and that extra roll that goes around your tummy. Um, you need, need 200 calories less per day um, when you're in the menopause. So nutrition can help for these people as well, as well as exercise. And then booby. Now, dear old booby, because people think that their petrol, pet muscles are the ones to, in your breast, but no, the breast doesn't have any muscle in it. So it's supported by skin. It's also supported by something called Cooper's ligaments, which I always remember because that was my maiden name. So the Cooper's ligaments, because they're ligaments, they get stretchy with estrogen and they like their estrogen. And your boobs move. So they move about four centimeters when you just walk, let alone when you run, <laughs> and it, you know, more than doubles that. Um, so people trying to exercise and trying to get fit running when in their fifties or a little bit earlier, you know, will get sore boobs. So support, good support bras, um, good information on what they should and shouldn't be doing, what exercise wise, good supporting underwear as well can make a difference for these ladies. And then we've got prickly coming in to join us as well. Now prickly would benefit from, from some lubrication and dry vagina is another problem in, in menopause. Dry vagina, low libido and painful sex. So just by some time, mm -hmm giving the suggestion on the right lubricant can, can improve these ladies and other treatments that we use as well. And then Mr. Puffy has to be included because he's the one that you get bloated and you have constipation perhaps, and you have gut problems. So nice, nice abdominal massage. And again, the correct emptying bladder and bars. And these other dwarfs can join the other menopause dwarfs. So we've now got quite a little dwarf collection. Um, but they, uh, they are forgotten, particularly the joint pain. And I think that the advice to help people with all is you. It, it's so interesting that you, you talk about that. And, and again, what I love about you, Sue, is that you normalize it. You, you bring hu always bring your humor to it, but humor in a kind way, because, you know, if someone is suffering from any one of those, um, it, it's tough. You know, it can really sort of bear down on, on their life. And, but again, you know, some of the things you've highlighted, like the achy, everyone I think associates, um, you know, menopause with, you know, getting old, um, you know, uh, hot flushes, etc. And it's not, it's a whole raft of other things, which again, what you're pointing out, you know, just information is so important. Mm -hmm. Knowledge as early as possible is so important. A bit like when we were talking about the, you know, the, the new mums and the anti and the postnatal um, uh, journey is more knowledge you have the more empowered you are the, the more you know how to take action indeed yeah and, and people are seeking help now i think as well which is which is good yeah yeah absolutely and you know the taboo is getting lifted the advice is out there you, you know it's thank goodness there's people like you who who have that and that people know it's about knowing who to go to as you say um you know the, there's only a uh, you know a, a a finite number of of specialist physiotherapists in the country and we need to know how to find you. So, um, so thank you for sharing that. So I guess, look, you know, we, we've covered your journey, um, you know, creating your business, the passion behind what you do, the different services, how you help um, you know, women at that stage of giving birth after, um, you know, after giving birth and now obviously with, with, with menopause and how you've adapted um, 
you know, in how you deliver your services now, both virtually and, and obviously still in person. Um, so what does the future look like for, for Sue Lewis? You know, if we, were, if we were sitting down talking in another six, 12, 18 months time, what are your hopes and ambitions and what, what do you see happening? Well, I, I do feel much happier now we are back to face to face because I think, yeah. you know, as physios, we are hands on. So we do want to check someone's tummy. We do want to check someone's pelvic floor. We do want to examine their posture. So I'm really mm. pleased that we do face to face. Um, but I, as I said, I do think that we will keep, I will keep some of the Zooms going as well because then people haven't got to travel necessary to me. And a lot of the history taking and, um, basic examination I can do on the screen quite easily um I obviously can't I'm sure it'd be illegal examine some floor on the screen but I can you know check their back and their, and then send them out a, a lot of email handouts um it's taking much more time doing my admin because normally I would yeah, hand sure. when I see them but now I go back afterwards and um send them information that that we've talked about so i think the zoom and the face-to-face -face for the um gynae patients would definitely be there um i'm not sure about the postnatal i think the postnatal class classes will continue on the video because we've got we've got them made now um jill's very good and every month or so she does a 30 second little video for the month of february or you know we're mm. going to do a process month and so we, we keep the little bits of videos going um so zoom has been a lifesaver for a lot of people i mean i didn't know that existed you know, i'm sure look, most people didn't a couple of years ago absolutely um, yeah. a lot of there's been a steep learning curve i mean this i'm sure for everybody but you know and perhaps not the right time of life but in fact it's, it's been good because it's been challenging so there have been a lot of online courses <laughs> and i must say maria elliott at um mummy mot and maria elliott's practice yeah. Is in Valley Street. I mean, she's done some very, very good workshops, as have the Really Helpful Club. And in fact, you know, thanks to you, Sarah, and all your your co, um, there's been some brilliant sessions, particularly with Georgie Crone, because without yes. her, I would know even less about social media. Yes. Uh, Instagram, um, Twitter, Facebook, you know, I did the courses so that I could try and do it. And I did my first reel this week, which was um, unusual, but I'm very oh. pleased. Don't know about real so I thought gosh well, that's quite good if I knew something you know and I managed to do it but so without um without having had this lockdown then you know wouldn't have expanded my my horizons as well so I think antenatal well people do still you know are working later whether they're working from home or whether they go back to the office uh, I think I don't know whether the course together um and postnatal we'll just have to wait and see but um at least it has been a time for reinventing oneself. I've got a new website and, uh, you know, but there's still an awful lot more to learn out there. And I'll do wait and see what people want. I mean, I never say no to anything. So, uh, you know, I'll do whatever anyone wants within reason. Well, it's, it's fascinating hearing about your journey and watching your journey and to a degree being part of your journey. So, so thank you so much. I mean, it's, it, as ever, it's a, it's, a, it's a pleasure and a joy to chat to you and fun, but insightful and interesting. And, and I guess, you know, as ever, I always write down so many notes because, well, I mean, you know, there's too much information in there not, not to take it. Thank you to everybody um, for joining us. As I said, we're going to share this on to um, our IGTV. If you can there share that onwards, please do that because actually, you know, this is too important just to keep this to ourselves. We'll also share this on our Facebook group and we will share this on LinkedIn too. Sue, so you'll be able to do the same. So there's... There's no excuses for anybody not seeing this. And, and I would just leave you with this. You know, there's, there's so many taboos that we, are, we have broken, we continue to break. We're normalizing so much about women's health. That, and there's so much advice, there's so much support out there. You know, don't be afraid to, to ask for help. And I feel we should all have a Sue Lewis in our life ready for when we need that help. So Sue, thank you very much. I, I'm gonna break off now and, and share that onto IGTV. Thanks so much. Sarah, so much for all those lovely words and to thank you and look forward to seeing you soon. You Bye. too. Take care. Thanks for joining us.